Okay, we're gonna start with a bit of a book haul Ooh. because I don't know. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> we have control here. We can do whatever we want. We own this town. <laughs> um, okay, H- how many do you have? I have three. Hey, me too. Okay, let's go back and forth, shall we? <laughs> okay, that's always nice. <laughs> All right, I'll start with this one that I saw this book in New York. I actually took a photo of it and sent it to um, Lena, you know, Lena, obviously sent it to Lena. And because we both really love this author and Mm -hmm. she was like, did you buy it? I was like, I didn't because I know I'm not going to read it right now. Mm -hmm. And it's hardcover. Like I just shouldn't. And it has hunted me ever (laughs) since. So then on uh, CJ's birthday, we walked into a bookshop and I saw it and I was like, "Ah, I'm getting it. And so it is Alphabetical Diaries by Sheila Hetty. So nice. this is Sheila Hetty's newest book that literally just came out like last week or something. Whoa. Uh, and when I tell you that we're talking about a very avant-garde, <laughs> if we want to use that word, mm-hmm. um, I don't think that this is going to, I don't think that people are going to like this book. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. already my prediction yeah. I'm, i don't even know if i'm gonna like it i okay so basically <laughs> what it is is i'll just read you exactly how they worded it sheila hetty collected five hundred thousand words from a decade's worth of journals put the sentences in a spreadsheet and sorted them alphabetically she cut and cut and was left with six sixty thousand words of brilliance mayhem joy and sorrow these are her alphabetical diaries oh wait so they're pulled from actual letters from journals or journals so okay. she's kept journals over the oh, last her few decades her own journals yeah. oh wow that's weird. i know yeah so she for the last many years has kept journals and then she decided to put every single sentence into a spreadsheet that's crazy like as a separate thing and then uh sort by alphabet <laughs> alphabetize them and then go through and that so that's the text yeah and then just cut and delete right. to create like some form of thing i really think that that could be terrible oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is so interesting though that it just feels very it gimmicky really to me but it might be good it could be good it is exactly that's why i'm not sure so i'll read you how about i read you the first few yeah. lines and it's alphabetical <clears throat> so weird okay i know so all these sentences start with uh the word uh of course A book about how difficult it is to change, why we don't want to, and what's going on in our brain. A book can be more about more can be about more than one thing like a kaleidoscope it can have many things that coalesce into one thing different strands of a story the attempt to do several many more than one thing at a time since a book is kept together by its binding a book like a shopping mart all the selections a book that does only one thing one thing at a time a book that even the hardest of men would read a book that is a game a budget will help you know where to go a bunch of us met to have dinner that night but i left and walked off by myself bought the silver ring a bag of chips and sat in the main square and bummed a cigarette off an old french man then continued to sit there for many hours until the man with the bulgy eyes came to sit next to me and flirt a bus came which was going to the ferry but because i hesitated before getting on it drove angrily away interesting so i like that some the of the, some of the sentences are really long so it can it can so make it feel a little bit more it cuts it up a little bit. yeah instead of just being super choppy which is what i was expecting and it has some of that too very interesting it is very interesting. Here, mm-hmm. look, I see another interesting little section. A tendency to idealize the past. That's me. A tremendous amount is lost when there's a breakup. A trip to LA, a trip to New York. A wanderer on this tiny patch of earth. A waste of time. Drinking. A white moth is resting on a windowsill. A woman and two men are traveling in the desert. A writer has to follow their curiosity first and foremost. So that's more of a choppy section yeah. where there's like a lot of us. And but like if I cut to the middle of it, these are all I sentences. Yeah. I am thinking about the man from last night who played the piano. I am 31 after all. I am 32. I am through with them all. I am through with talking, but I still want the company of other people. Um, yeah, I like how it's it's ends. kind of sorted into different sections because of the alphabetical thing. So there's a yeah. section that's just her musing about things. And there's a section yeah. that's all about her saying things that she did or she's thinking, okay, I kind of like that, actually. It's really weird. It's kind weird. of fascinating. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I could see it working. I want you to read I that right away. I could see it, like you said, <laughs> being gimmicky. But yeah, that was the thing. Like, I had originally said to Lena, I was like, I'm not going to buy it because I'm probably not going to read it right away. Yeah. But now, like, maybe I should read that right away. That, that is really intriguing. And it kind of fits into intrigued. your letters vibe a little bit because it's a journal. It is, I like, agree. personal I writing. I agree. Hmm. Yeah. 
But also her journal is so well, weird. Some of those sentences, I'm like, why would you write a white moth does whatever? That's a weird thing to write in <laughs> journal. <laughs> what do you think of the cover? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of split on it. Like, it, and on one hand, I like the simplicity of it. I like the little ABC yep. that's going on there. But I also think it's kind of boring. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I don't split. know. It is interesting. So for, for our audio listeners, the cover is the word alphabetical diagonally takes up the entire cover. And then on the second A of alphabetical, diaries is there, mm. like an, agnost- an agnostic poem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that's called. <laughs> oh, that's good. I love that. For our non-believers out there. Um, <laughs> and then she, I'm just going to leave it there. And then Sheila Hetty is built off of the E and the T yeah. in the alphabet. I do like so how that worked of, out. It's cool. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a word cross or whatever. Um, and then A, B, C in alphabetical is yellow, red, and blue. So you're like seeing the alphabet. Mm-hmm. But then all of this is just text and the whole background is white or cream. Yeah. So it is a very simple cover, but it's got a couple things going on here. Also really on the spine, A, B, C um, are the same. They're like in their yeah. colors. But then so D and E are also like alphabetical ah, colors. We're down, really leaning so. in. Those primary really colors. Really leaned in. <laughs> Really curious. I'm curious about that guy. I'm really curious it's too. It's obviously like it's it's less of a how do I put this? It's more of a it's more on the art project side of writing, mm-hmm. right? Because you've got writing that is trying to be a novel or a story, but then you've got poetry, but then you've got like it's like I feel like there's novels, then there's poetry, then there's art projects. Where yeah. It's like, yeah. Okay, now we're just getting into something else that's trying to push an envelope totally somehow. but it also is kind of like yeah. poetic in some ways too it feels it like is, a, totally i'm intrigued by that i'm definitely intrigued by that well hmm. my uh, first selection is totally different i got the twisted okay. ones by t kingfisher which is a horror Whoa. book <laughs> so that is really i different. don't really know anything about this honestly t kingfisher is just one of those authors that i've become very intrigued by because a mm. lot of people have been like loving her books i saw a lot of people mentioning her like on our end of the year uh, survey and oh, yeah. a, a bunch of people have specifically like recommended me this as well as the hollow places i think is what the other one is called and they just happened to have a used copy of this at the bookstore this morning uh, as i mentioned i just went walking around this morning after my passport and so i was like you know what i'm gonna buy some things if i find anything and um yeah. so i honestly don't know anything about this the main character's name is mouse so that's fun oh yeah Huh. The first, yeah, the, the beginning of the back just says, when Mouse's dad asks her to clean out her dead grandmother's house, she says yes. After all, how bad could it be? Answer, pretty bad. Grandma was a hoarder yeah. and her house is packed to the gills with useless garbage. That would uh, that would be horrors enough, but there's more. Mouse stumbles across her step-grandfather's journal, which at first seems to be the ravings of a broken mind. Huh. Journal. Whoa. Look at that. Journal connection. So Journal. Yeah, and it's like a little bit thick, which is exciting for a it, horror it novel because a, a lot thick. of times horror books I feel like are really short because they just like are like go go go. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of like not knowing much about it, and I want to really get ready for for spooky season. I want to have a lot of horror books to read when it comes cool spooky time. So I grabbed that kind <laughs> of on a whim, but neat. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, the the next two books that I bought, I bought at the same time because they are new releases that I talked mm. about in our first episode of the year that I'm excited about. And so I had to pick them up. So the first one is The Kamogawa Food <gasps> Detectives by Hisashi Kashiwa. Oh my gosh. It's got to be the cutest little cover. I'm dying. It's, like, uh, it's got a cat. It's my favorite color. It's got food. I think I need that book. <laughs> I think you need this book. It's a little cat in a bowl. <laughs> Next to two other bowls, one of which has noodles in it, one of which seems to have a broth soup in it. Um, it's just such a sweet little book and I love the little spine on it too, oh, really. It's so got like these little scalloped yeah. edges. It's, it's really, really cute. <laughs> uh, the author, Kengi K- Kawamura, the author of If Cats Disappeared from the World says, it, their blurb is simply, warmed my heart. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that means mm-hmm. a lot coming from that guy. His book broke my heart a little bit, but in a good Ooh. way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the father-daughter duo are food detectives. Through ingenious investigations, they're able to recreate dishes from a person's treasured memories. Ooh. Dishes that may well hold the keys to unlocking their forgotten past and future happiness. Um, there's a lot more in that bio, but 
that's the gist. Cool. So I think it sounds really fun and it's very short. Like it's, it's, I think it's exactly 200 pages, but it's like kind of a shorter book and the font is kind of big. Yeah. So that's awesome. hopefully that's a quick read. Um, I'm excited very, about very that one. Cute. A lot of people have messaged me about that one because it's oh, cat and food. Cat. Like it's two, it's my but two things. The cat is not mentioned. Yeah, is there actually a cat, or the, is it just exactly? So maybe I'll <laughs> we'll have to do some. I feel like a lot of books, like are fake cat books. Like remember yep. the um, yep. you know that one you read, the bookshop one, Murasaki Bookshop. There's a cat yeah, on the cover, cat on and the it had cover. nothing to do with a cat. They just know we like cats. Yeah, they know that we yeah. want that. We want cats. <laughs> Um, all right, what about you? What's Ooh, next? Yeah, so this second one I got is Duma Key by Stephen Whoa. King. I know. Um, Huge. Yeah, it is quite large. And as we know, I'm kind of at that stage of my Stephen King journey where I'm buying the kind of random ones that I don't know anything mm -hmm. about um, or his new ones, of course. And so this is one of those random ones that I don't really know anything about. But I uh, they had a used copy and it's in the nice trade paperback edition. So I was like, oh, let me just read the back and see how it is. Mm -hmm. And it sounds pretty cool. Um, the main character is this man who was in a an accident, a construction ac accident, and he lost his arm. And his whole life, like, blew up after that. And so then he's, like, renting a little house in Duma Key, which is a little uh, place off the Florida coast. And he, something about okay. an old lady. He's, like, um, he forms a bond with this old woman. And then, I don't know, something probably crazy starts to happen. And uh, I was reading some reviews, and one person was like, this is my favorite Stephen King book and they were very passionate about that's it being funny because I was just thinking I was like I've never heard of that book it right? must be one of the most random ones but it could be your favorite Stephen King exactly and I, I that reminds me actually one of my co-workers loves Stephen King and one time I asked her like what uh, some of her favorites were and all of her favorites were like the weird ones that I've oh. never thought twice about so now I'm like Maybe I do need to read Tommy Knockers. Like, what even is that? Yeah, yeah. There's you know? gems hiding. Exactly. In there. there are gems, and I feel like I often like glaze over them. Like I don't think about them very much. But now I'm like, I wanna, I wanna dive a little deeper. Um, I'm at that stage where if I'm gonna be a true Stephen King fan, I need to read true. some of his weird ones. You know, some of his yeah, it's true less famous ones. So I'm excited to have that. Probably won't read it soon, but I'm glad I have it. <laughs> the final book that I got this week was The Riddles of the Sphinx by Anna Schechtman. That's that book. This is the book. The book so you the set up the Google alert for. <laughs> I literally set up a Google alert for this one. The subtitle is Inheriting the Feminist History of the Crossword Puzzle. And it seems to be a part memoir. So mm. talking about her life how she came to be a crossword engineer, mm -hmm. um, but also the history of the crossword puzzle, which was for almost all of its history, a women's thing. Like it was mainly women that made the crosswords oh. and women that wrote, did the crosswords. And then at some point it shifted to suddenly becoming a male industry, but it does not have a male history. Right. So that's very interesting. Um, and so I think she's kind of focusing in on the fact that personally in her existence she's like the only she's one of the very few women oh, okay. crossword puzzleists yeah. that there are but historically they've mainly been women so how, how that seems yeah interesting. that's an interesting dynamic yeah so she's a professor i didn't realize she's a says a clarman fellow at cornell university um oh and in 2024 that's nice she'll become an assistant professor in the department of literatures and english good for her good for you <laughs> in addition to her bi-monthly crosswords for The New Yorker. Uh, and she's written a lot of articles. She lives in Brooklyn. So that's really neat. I, like you said, Raylene, I found out about this book ages ago. Mm. I, so basically, I don't know if you remember it. I went through a real crossword phase. There was just, it was like, it was a hot flash one. It was like a month where I just yeah. got really into crosswords. Yeah. And uh, I noticed that a lot of the crosswords I was liking were by Anna Schechtman. And so mm. I looked her up and I found in this one random blog that she was writing a book. And I was like, oh, wow, that would be perfect. Yeah. I would love to read the book. I'm excited about you. I'm excited about crossword puzzles. I want to read your book. No information. Mm. There was no information about this book. I All I knew was that it was going to be called The Riddles of the Sphinx. <laughs> so mysterious. And so I set up a Google alert <laughs> for the riddles of the sphinx which i've never done before yeah. i've never set up a google alert before, but i set it up and so every like 
four months, I would get a little email that was like, there's a new article that mentions the riddles of the Sphinx. <laughs> it does feel like a kind of like a conspiracy or something. Like it does. the riddles of the Sphinx fits. and you're getting these little alerts about it. It's so funny. <laughs> What's also funny is that in the, I haven't turned the Google alert off. And in the last <laughs> month, I am getting one like every other day yeah. because they're doing promo for of the course. book now that it's out. Um but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. And I found out that she reads the audio book. So I Ooh. might do it via audio. That's always a good one. Um, yeah. Because that could be cool. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. I'm glad you finally got <sighs> it. Well, you? my last book, actually, I had only bought those two books. And I was sitting in the car. Like, I walked back to my car and was just about to drive away and leave. And I started getting a phone call from the bookstore. I was like, uh-oh, did I, like, forget something there or something? Yeah. And so I answer the call. And they're like, we actually have a book here for you. We just hadn't, like, gotten to calling you oh, yet. Yeah. We didn't realize it was whatever. And so I was like, okay, no problem. I'll be right back. And um, it was Bunny by Mona Awad, oh, which is a cool. book I've already read. But I've just been yeah. waiting to find a used copy because I want to own it. I borrowed it from my friend when i read it and it's like brand new condition like it's oh, really? pristine and i'm so glad it was a paperback because i didn't really want it in hardcover i like it in paperback it's just nice but yeah anyway so i'm really glad to finally own this because it's definitely one of those books that i am gonna be rereading one of these days it's just yeah it's one of those books that sticks with you and i was like i need to own that and i recommended to the person at working at the bookstore cause she was like oh i really want to read this book and i was like okay you should read it but you should also read uh we ride upon sticks by kwan berry because yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like you'll like that too so yeah it was exciting it was fun it's fun to do that. a little recommendation to the bookstore people because when i used to work at bookstores that was always nice getting actual good yeah, recommendations yeah backwards backwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, there you have it, everyone. That's it. That's what we bought. 